Hey everyone, in today's video, we are going to create a data analysis portfolio project in Python. We'll be creating a real-world video dataset using YouTube API and analyze the channel statistics of any channels on YouTube. At the end of the video, you have built a unique portfolio project and be able to push this project to your current GitHub portfolio. I'm super excited, so let's get started. Firstly, let's create a new project folder. I'll just do it in my terminal. Let's call it YouTube API folder. Now we can go into this folder and you could also choose to create a Python virtual environment for this project, which is a very, very good practice. And I would really encourage you to do that. But this project is quite simple, so I'll skip that this time. Let's also initialize a git repo for version control by running git init so that we can create some checkpoints during the project later on and avoid the situation where we make some terrible mistakes and we want to go back to the previous version. Next, we will launch Jupyter Lab and create a new notebook for our project. If you're wondering why I'm using Jupyter Lab instead of Jupyter Notebooks, please check out this previous video here. Now, let's take a look at the YouTube API documentation and read the instructions on how to request data. So here it is, and here are the steps that we need to take in order to use the YouTube API. Since I've already done this, I'll show you exactly how to do it. Let's click on the Google Developers Console link. If you have a Gmail account, you should have access to this website. I'm already logged in, so this is my Gmail account. Then create a new project by clicking on this button over here. You might see a different button if you don't have any project yet. I already have some projects, but let's just create a new project uh, just to show you how it works. Now let's create a new project and let's choose a project name. Just let's say new project. <laughs> Then click on create. Next, we need to request an API key by clicking on the credentials section over here. Then create credentials. Now we have the API key and we just need to copy this API key into our notebook. Let's quickly do that. As you can see, an API key is just a simple encrypted string that identifies an application. So it's used to associate API requests with an application for billing and quota and etc. So if you scroll down over here in the documentation, you see that the quota limit for YouTube API is 10,000 units. And how many units you use depends on what kind of operations you're requesting. So the read operation, which is what we'll be using, is actually very cheap. It's only one unit per operation, but the write, search, and video upload cost a lot more units. So this limit is to prevent that some applications will make too many requests to the API server and overwhelm the server and other people cannot request any data anymore. The last step we need to take for the API access is to enable YouTube API service for our project. Let's go back to the dashboard in the Google Developers Console. Click on Enable APIs and Service button. Then we can search for the YouTube API version 3 and here it is. Click on it, then enable. Done. Now under the quick starts tab in the YouTube API documentation page, we go to Python because we are working with Python. We can see the required packages in order to use the YouTube API. We we'll just copy this code into our terminal to install these packages. Um, the package we need to use is the Google API Python client package. I'll just copy it here because my MacBook also has Python 2 installed, so I'll need to use pip3 instead of pip. Now let's dive into the YouTube API references to see how to use it. On the left here is all the information that we can um, request with the YouTube API. For retrieving YouTube video data, we'll look at three modules, the channels module, the playlist items module, and the videos module. We all know how YouTube works, right? We have the YouTube channels, then we have the upload playlist, and then under this, this upload playlist, we have all the videos. So if we have a channel ID, we can find out what is the upload playlist ID of that channel. And from this upload playlist ID, we can find out all the video IDs of this channel. And from the video IDs, we can retrieve all the information of the videos. Now let's go to channels. This module basically gives us information of the channel. If we scroll down here, we can see all kinds of information that we can get, such as the channel name, description, upload playlist ID, 
view count, subscriber count, etc. We go to the list method, then click on the icon or the code icon next to the list by channel ID over here. Then scroll to the Python tab because we are using Python. This is basically what we need to do. I'll just copy this whole thing into our notebook to see uh, if we can make it work. So first of all, we don't need this client secrets file variable because we are not doing user authentication, um, but we are using developer key. So um, so for this YouTube build object here, we'll replace the credentials with our developer key. Okay, let's run this. Uh, we got an error because uh, we haven't imported the Google API library. So let's import this module and also pandas as well because we're going to need it later. Now we can replace the this whole thing with the build function because we have already imported this. Now it actually works. Now let's replace this channel ID with a list of the channel IDs that we are actually interested in. I love Ali Abdal's channel, so I want to analyze this channel. Let's go to YouTube and search for this legendary man. <laughs> On the URL here, you don't see his channel ID, but there's a trick to find out the channel ID of any channel. Let's click on any of his videos, then click on the on his profile on that video over here. So you see now that the channel ID now appears on the URL. Let's copy that part of the URL into our notebook. We then do a comma join and channel IDs. This is to concatenate all the channel IDs together with a comma. Uh, well, in this case, we only have one channel ID, but later if you want to add a lot more channel IDs to, to get the data from those channels all together, then we'll need to do this method so that it also works for multiple channels. Then the response now should include the response items for all the channels in our list. Let's try that. But this looks terrible, right? Let's make it prettier by using the IPython display module for JSON. Now, if we put it into the JSON function, it looks much nicer and easier to understand. I'll just quickly draw the structure of the response here to make it easier for you to, to follow. This is really the hardest part of the project, but we'll get through it. Please bear with me. Now, there's a few interesting info we, we might want to extract from this response. For example, the subscribers, the views, total videos, and most importantly, the uploads playlist ID. Our strategy would be to loop through each item uh, in the response, extract all the information of the channel, and then store it in a dictionary. So if we have 10 channels, then we'll just end up with 10 dictionaries, okay? Then in the end, we'll just need to append all these dictionaries together to make a data frame. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll create a function called getChannelStats for this, and I'll speed up the video a bit here. Let's try out this function and print out the output. Yeah, it seems to work. And wow, Ali Abdal has made 426 videos. Well, I've only made 25 videos and I'm really so proud of myself, you know. The next step for us is to use the playlist ID to get all the videos ID from the channel. In the YouTube API references, we go to playlist items. This is the method uh, we are going to use. Actually, very similar to what we have done just before uh, for the channel stats. We don't need statistics because we just need to get the video IDs and the playlist ID of Ali Abdal, we just pasted here. Then let's copy this piece of code into our, our notebook. And then we just try to run the response.
Okay, that seems to work. Now we'll just create an empty list um, to store all the video IDs. And then we'll just loop through all the items and append the video ID into this list. Let me just quickly do that. So this seems to work, but the problem is that we only get five video IDs, as you can see. And we know that AliUpDAO actually has 426 videos, much more than that. So from the documentation, the max result parameter is default to five. And that's why we only get five items or five videos. Now we will change it to the max value, which is 50. So we'll get 50 videos with this request. But 50 is still not enough. We want to get all the 400 videos. So we we'll have to implement something with the next page token. So, so long as the next page token is not none, we will run the request again until we reach the last page. Let me go ahead and do that with a, a ugly wow loop. Now let's try out this function to see if everything works. Yeah, it seems to work because now we have 426 videos. Perfect. Now it's time to extract the video information based on the list of video IDs. Let's take a look at the documentation again. Go to videos and the list method. Then we'll just copy the code here to our notebook. Let's try this for the first five videos and print out the response. There are quite some interesting stuff here, so I'll make a dictionary of all the things that I want to extract and then create an empty dictionary to store all the video info. So for each key value pair in this start to keep dictionary, I'll extract the video information from the response and then save it to the video info. I've done this before, so I know that something will go wrong. It is because some videos will miss certain information. For example, some videos don't have any tags. Probably Ali just forgot to put the tags in. So to prevent getting this kind of error, we'll implement the try accept here. So, uh, so if we get an error, we'll assign the value to none. Let me finish up this get video details function. Now let's try it out and yeah, luckily it works. And this is the final data set from all our hard work. I also made a bonus function here for you guys that also extracts the comments from the videos. I find it really funny to read through all the comments people made. And more importantly, we can do tons of analysis on this huge amount of text. I'll link the final code to this project in the description down below so you can check it out and run it yourself. Now that we have an amazing data set to work with, there are actually a lot of ways to analyze it depending on your interests. What is the average views per video? And does the number of likes and comments really matter for views? Or does the title length also matter for views? And how long usually are his videos? And how many tags do his videos have? And which tags associate with most views, for example? And how often does he upload his videos on which days in the week? We can actually get all this information from this data set. But before we can do that, we will need to do some data pre-processing and also probably some feature engineering to enrich our data set. Firstly, let's take a look at the new values. We can see that we don't really have the new values for all the columns except for the tax column but it's not super important so let's ignore it for now secondly let's check the data types we can see that all columns are in object format at the moment which doesn't make sense for some columns like view counts and like counts so i'll go ahead and convert them to numeric or integer if you will you can also do a for loop here, but um, in order to do it faster and in a cleaner way, I would recommend you to use an apply function here.
Next, let's create a column for which day in the week he published his videos based on the published ad column that we see here. I'm super bad with dates, so I just found this code from somewhere on the, on the internet, so I just chuck it in. Uh, next, we will need to convert the duration column to numeric. At the moment, it looks pretty weird because it's like a string with letters and numbers. I found on a Stack Overflow thread that uh, talks about how to convert the YouTube duration to number of uh, seconds. So I just copied this code uh, here and adapt it a little bit and use it. Problem solved. Then we'll add the number of tags for the video because we also want to analyze it later as well. So from the list of tags that we see on each row, we'll apply a lambda function on it to get the length of the list, which is basically the number of tags. Ah, we got an error here because yeah, because we, we have some empty tags in this column, so so let's make a little if else like this so that when the tax is none, we will assign zero to it. Now let's print out the data set to see if everything works. That looks pretty good, right? Now let's move on to the most fun part, which is data analysis. First of all, let's see what Ali's best and worst performing videos are very curious. Let's import Seaborn and Matplotlib packages. Now we can make a bar chart for the view count, sorting the videos from the highest views to the lowest views. The x-axis is now overlapping because of some long titles, so I'll just rotate the x-axis 90 degrees. And the y-axis also has a weird number format, so I just reformat it as well. Honestly, I just googled everything and find the solution to these issues. I don't know it by heart, to be honest. Now let's also take a look at the worst performing videos on this channel as well, using the same function but with the opposite ordering, so from the lowest views to the highest views. Well, it seems like these videos are all his very old vlogs, I think before he became popular. Now let's also take a look at the view distribution across all the videos on his channel. We can use histogram and different plots for this, but I'll be using the violin plot. So indeed, some of his videos are really outliers here with so many million views, but most of his videos are actually just around 200,000 views. File and plot is actually very useful if you want to compare several channels together. Next, we'll plot the number of views against number of likes and comments just to see if there's any relationship here. Let's do some scatter plots. It's always fun. We can see some positive correlation here, especially for the number of likes. It makes sense because the more people who watch the videos, the more likes the video could potentially get. And also the other way around as well, because the more likes the video gets, the more likely the YouTube algorithm will recommend videos to other people. So based on this, if you want to support this channel, please hit the like button below to help this video reach more people. Now let's also see what's the average duration of his video with a histogram. I think most of his videos are around 10 to 15 minutes. The longest video is 3 hours or so, <laughs> quite interesting. From the video titles, we can also create a word cloud to see which words occur most often in his video titles. There's a Python package for this called word cloud. I'll probably explain some more NLP concepts in another video. For now, let's take a look at the word cloud. Wow, this looks so Ali Abdao. We see the most common words here are Cambridge, medical student, 
life, vlog and study. And the last thing that I want to see is which days in the week he usually uploads his video. We can easily make a bar chart for this, but be aware that we will have to order the weekdays manually because Python doesn't know which days come first. That's unexpectedly stupid, right? So I just copy what I did here. And we can see in this bar chart that he actually uploads his videos mostly three times a week and on Monday, Wednesday and Sunday. Now that we have done quite some analysis already, the final touch to our project before we share it with other people or upload it to GitHub is to clean up the notebook. So let's remove everything that is redundant and also comment your code. That is also really important. It's also a very good practice to move all the functions you made to a separate Python file and then later import this Python file to our notebook. This would make our notebook much cleaner and if you have time, you can also go into each function and write some documentation for it just to help other people uh, know what the function does and uh, can easily reuse your code later on. Finally, the last thing we want to do is to push this project to our current GitHub portfolio. Let's go to the terminal and run git add. This would add all the files in our folder to git and then we can commit this change by typing git commit and then say something like added files or something, anything you want. Then we'll go to the GitHub website to create a new remote repo. This is how I can share this project with other people on GitHub. Let's call this repo something like YouTube API analysis. Then let's copy the URL of our repo to the clipboard. Then go back to the terminal and do git remote add origin and copy the URL here. Now you can quickly do a check to see if the remote origin is indeed there. So we will run git remote dash v. Yeah, this looks good. Now we can push our local git repo to the remote git repo. Now if we go to the git repo on the GitHub website, we'll actually see our files are added there. If you reached the end of this video, congratulations, you've done a great job. And there are so many different things that we can do with this data set and we haven't even touched the comment data set yet. So feel free to use the code that I shared below and make it yours and build on it. If you got any value from this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.